Continuing our reflections tonight on President Trump's announcement at Mar-a-Lago that he'll be running for president again. Uh, of course, a main thrust of his presidency, his campaign in 2016, and certainly a big part of last night's announcement had to do with the border. Uh, jobs left undone and what still needs to happen, especially considering the two years of disaster under President Biden. And coincidentally, there's a whole lot in the news right now about immigration policies and the border. So we got to go to an expert. He's Mark Krikorian, Executive Director of Center for Immigration Studies. Mark, thanks for joining us. Sure, glad to be here. Let's start with the decision yesterday by a federal judge here in Washington, D.C. Uh, with regard to Title 42. Now, uh, remind us again, this is the policy that uh, actually is done through HHS, Health and Human Services, which can shut down the border and refuse to allow entry based on uh, health purposes. It was utilized during COVID-19, right? Right. Um, what it basically does is allows the Border Patrol to bounce people back across the border. No hearings, no asylum, no nothing. And um, the, it's the only Trump immigration measure that Biden has kept in place, even though he's progressively using it for fewer and fewer people across the border. And what uh, the ACLU sued to get rid of it because it's a COVID related measure. I mean, there is some grounds to getting rid of it. Mm. And so a judge um, said, you're right, uh, you know, it's uh, you can't use it. Now, he delayed that ruling until next month. But the point is, once this Title 42 measure goes away, Homeland Security itself is worried that the level of crossings uh, uh, across the border could double or even triple. And, uh, you know, it's yeah. Katie bar the door, except that the Border Patrol isn't allowed to bar the door. <laughs> They're just going to have to let more people in. There's no door to bar in some cases. And uh, Mark, sure. I, forgive me, it was Title 42, whether it was called Title 42 or not, Hasn't there been a historic uh, uh, ruling with regard to our immigration policies having to do with people coming in with communicable diseases? I mean, haven't we always screened potential people coming into our country for this purpose and turned people well, away? Yeah, this isn't even a screening thing. This is the point of this is whether you have COVID or not, they don't want a bunch of people, you know, gathering in detention centers. And so the that's the basis of the authority uh -huh. that the Border Patrol can just push them out no nothing, no claims, no nothing. So yes, there's been communicable disease requirements. If you remember at the beginning of uh, Godfather II, you know, that came up where young yes. Vito Corleone was uh, isolated because he tested positive for something. But this is a different thing. This is not testing anybody. This is just turning them around and sending them back. Problem is they're using it for a smaller and smaller share of people every day. And once it goes away, there's no reason for anyone in the world not to try to get across the border because this administration has said they will let them in, let them go, okay. basically on the honor system that hopefully they'll come back at some point when there's a hearing. And we're just not seeing that happen, of course. And by the way, the judicial system is so backed up right now that their hearings are, are as far as the eye can see. Uh, yeah. All right, so we'll see what happens there. Meanwhile, Secretary Mayorkas of uh, Homeland Security, he testified before a House committee yesterday. Didn't go well for him. He was challenged by the Republicans who will soon be in the majority uh, with regard to his previous testimony where he claimed that the border is closed, that, uh, of course, we've got tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of gotaways, which by definition means the border is not closed. Do you expect this new House majority to go after Mayorkas pretty hard? I'm pretty sure they will. I mean, they're going to not only grill him, uh, through these kind of oversight hearings and, you know, subpoena information, because his department, Homeland Security, is very cagey about releasing statistics. It's really remarkable how much they try to hide from people. Uh, the Trump administration, they just put it all on the Internet and said, you know, here it is. Yeah. Uh, but, but they're going to go beyond that, I think. I think there's a very good chance that there's going to be articles of impeachment against Mayorkas. Now, they won't be able to convict him in the Senate. You need a two thirds vote for that. And there's not enough Democrat Democrats won't vote for that. But they will. I'm pretty sure they'll impeach him, impeach him in the House. And he richly deserves it. Yeah. And politically, I don't think it would be harmful in the way that impeaching the president would be. I mean, that's backfires whenever you do it. They did it against Clinton, did it against Trump. It doesn't work. Yeah. But this guy is very unsympathetic. And he's basically lied to Congress. So sure, absolutely, I think they're going to impeach him. Well, it also puts a spotlight on the disastrous policies right. at the border and what's going on. So I would almost, if, if they do 
proceed with impeachment, I would suggest probably the Biden administration would ask him to step down lest the, the dirty laundry is aired there in that high profile hearing. Mark, I also saw this headline out of Texas. Uh, Governor Abbott declared his state as being invaded on the southern border. What, what powers as governor does he have with regard to an invasion declaration? What does that mean? The basis of this comes from a constitution that says state can't wage war unless it is actually being invaded. In other words, only the federal government can do that. And so the contention here is that the enormous wave of illegal immigrants is tantamount to invasion. Now he can say that, the question is then what does he do? If he takes illegal aliens into custody who haven't violated say a state law like trespassing or something, in other words, just because they're illegal, that the federal government might prosecute those officers. And so what it does is really does is sets up a lawsuit because I guarantee you the first thing Texas tries to do that is actually immigration related, that is goes beyond regular state powers like trespassing, that the ACLU will run to court and sue. So it's an important thing, not because it's going to make a difference now, but because it basically starts the process of getting this to the Supreme Court for them to decide, does what's happening at the border now constitute invasion under the definition in the Constitution, yes or no? And that's not a clear-cut question. Well, one would presume that an invasion would be a military action. Right, uh, exactly. But this has never been really tested before. Interesting. It has not been tested. And that's why I think this is important to do so we can sort of get that you know, on the record, one way or the other. Finally, we also had a word from the outgoing House majority, the Democrats, that in their lame duck session, they're going to take up the DACA concern, the DACA issue. What, what a profile and courage that they didn't take this up so it could be a campaign issue before the election. Now they're going to take it up and it will be up to the Republican majority when they come in, whatever this House majority under the Democrats do uh, the Republicans coming in, they can undo it, can they not? Isn't there a 60 day legislative review process? There is that, but I think even before you get to that point, the question is what would the Senate do? Because I mean, the House can pass, they've passed all kinds of cockamamie legislation. <laughs> uh, it doesn't get anywhere in the Senate. So would it be, could they get 60 votes for something like this in the Senate? And the Senate's trying to do some thing on their own of amnestying the uh, illegal immigrants who came as uh, teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, you know, what's going to happen if they pass a law, both houses, the president signs it, then it's law. But because, but if the Senate doesn't okay it, then everything turns into a pumpkin because this Congress ends and a new Congress has to start from scratch in January. Interesting. And finally, in our final 30 seconds, the president did talk about the border and policies. I think you've been a pretty fair supporter and critic of President Trump during his four years. What was your impression of his announcement? And do you think he's the right man to uh, push our immigration and border policies the way they need to go right now? I run a think tank, so we don't do electoral politics. This Fair is enough. just me speaking as a individual voter. The president did, President Trump did a lot of good, aired issues that needed to be aired, but there were a lot of problems. He, he did, he had saw, saw some successes, as president at the border, but there was a lot that wasn't done yet. And, um, you know, if I have to vote for him a third time, I will. But um, personally, again, just as a voter, right. uh, I'm hoping not to have to. Understood. Mark Krikorian, the, the one thing is for sure, the border is going to be a huge issue in this election, and that means we'll be calling on you a lot. Thanks for being here tonight. More to come on O'Connor Tonight.